Hello, my name is Dr. Ron Dalton Jr. and I am a doctor who specializes in spinal disc conditions and I wanted to make this video today about ibuprofen and the reason I wanted to do this was because a lot of patients that I deal with um, are taking this medication and I know that everybody wants to go and research the medication just to see what the side effects are, what it does, if there's any drug interactions or interactions with different nutritional supplements that you might be taking. And so what I wanted to do is just to save some time and go ahead and put this brief video together to go over all the information about ibuprofen so you have a better idea about um, when you should be taking it and even if you want to take it and at the end we'll even talk about some alternatives that would be more natural for those of you who are interested in that so let's go ahead and dig into the information here first of all let's talk about what ibuprofen is ibuprofen is in a class of drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or usually they're referred to as NSAIDs. Um, and usually when you're dealing with pain or, or you know, a situation like that where you would be taking ibuprofen, the other option would be steroids. But a lot of times doctors are a little hesitant to recommend these only because steroids have a lot of negative side effects. And there are side effects to NSAIDs, um, including ibuprofen, which we'll cover in a little bit, but um, they're usually not as severe as with steroids. Common names of ibuprofen would include Advil, Children's Advil, Motrin, uh, Metaprin, Nuprin, Pediacare. There's there's a number of different uh, names that you'll see associated with um, ibuprofen. Typically, the use of ibuprofen is for mild to moderate pain, uh, fever, and also to reduce inflammation. And of course, I see a lot of patients that are taking this only because most of my patients have back pain. Now the way that ibuprofen works is it actually blocks an enzyme called cyclooxygenase and I'm going to show you a picture of this in just a minute so don't get freaked out by these you know big chemical words but what cyclooxygenase is it's an enzyme that produces something called prostaglandins and prostaglandins are chemicals that are produced by the body during an inflammatory response and they're responsible for what causes pain so if so the theory is with ibuprofen is if you block that enzyme it's not going to produce the prostaglandins and that's how a person experiences pain relief now this is kind of tricky though because when you're dealing with an inflammatory process, one of the precursors to inflammation is something called arachidonic acid. Now let me just explain in layman's terms what inflammation is. Um, typically what's going to happen is that inflammation will start when a person has two things going on. Number one, either you have an injury of some sort, or number two, it can also be brought on by um, poor dietary choices, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. But let's talk about an injury because that's probably what happens in most cases for most people. Whenever you have an injury, the tissues in that area will actually be damaged. And what the body does is it recognizes that you have an injured area. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, we need to rush a lot of blood into that area because blood is what carries oxygen and nutrients for proper healing to occur. Well, this all sounds good on the surface because if the blood does that, now we're going to start to heal the injured area. However, because there's a rush of blood to the area, what's going to happen is that it's going to swell up and it's going to get really hot to the touch and really inflamed, okay, and that's going to start to cause you pain, not only because of the swelling in the area, but also because of the chemicals that are being released by your body. Now, arachidonic acid is actually a chemical that is found in cell walls and um, when you have an injured area sometimes the cells will be damaged to the point where the cell walls tear this arachidonic acid is released and then what happens is the body has to get rid of that somehow because if it doesn't it's going to cause you problems well as the body tries to take care of this arachidonic acid what happens is that um, a chemical reaction occurs and prostaglandins are produced and prostaglandins are what causes the inflammation pain and swelling okay so when we're talking about um, these types of medications, our goal is to stop that process from happening one way or another. And that's how a lot of these drugs are working. Now, another source of arachidonic acid, like I said, is your diet. Um, but usually that's more of a situation when you're dealing with a chronic inflammatory condition. And by the way, chronic inflammatory conditions aren't just painful conditions. Now, it could be things like arthritis, um, you know, it could be things like chronic back pain or that sort of thing. But also what we're dealing with are things like heart disease, cancers, um, pulmonary diseases, things like allergies, asthma, uh, 
uh, COPD, these types of things. A lot of these types of conditions are related to chronic inflammation in the body, and a lot of that, like I said, has to do with your diet. Now the recommended dosages, um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details here, and the reason why is because uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I've actually created a page on my website with all of this written out for you. Um, I'm also going to be giving you a link to some resources that I'm going to be talking about in this video in a little bit. But what you can do is you can go to that page, and I'll give that page to you at the end of this video, and um, you'll see all of this written out for you so that you have these guidelines if you're going to be taking ibuprofen that you can follow pretty closely. Now let's talk about ibuprofen drug interactions and contraindications because this is something that people are always concerned about. The first thing we want to talk about is blood pressure medications. You do not want to take ibuprofen if you're taking blood pressure medications because it will make uh, the blood pressure medications less effective. Gentamicin, which is an antibiotic, will also interact with ibuprofen and it will also make the antibiotic less effective. Warfarin or any other type of oral blood thinner or anticoagulant, which a lot of times this is recommended to people who have clotting disorders, um, you know, which we hear a lot about that and it's a very serious problem but you do not want to take ibuprofen when you're taking these types of medications because ibuprofen also will thin the blood and it could cause excessive bleeding another concern with this is that if you have a cut and you're taking and you're combining these medications the area won't clot and so this is really the major issue with that because you don't have a way to stop the bleeding at that point you do not want to take ibuprofen during pregnancy or while breastfeeding and also, um, if you're taking lithium, which is a medication that's taken a lot of times for people who have uh, different types of depression and that sort of thing, uh, it, it will interact with ibuprofen as well. So you don't want to be taking these two together either. And if you're looking at nutritional supplements, the only two things that really have any research saying that they would interact is white willow bark, which is usually a natural anti-inflammatory. So it's common for patients to uh, take white willow bark at the same time that they're taking a medication like this because they think it's going to help with the pain. The problem is they will interact, so you do not want to be taking white willow bark at the same time that you're taking ibuprofen. And the other one is vitamin B3 or niacin. Um, I don't know a lot of people that take B3. There's a lot of people that take vitamin B12 because a lot of people say that it gives them energy, uh, but you do not want to mix ibuprofen with vitamin B3 or niacin. Now the side effects of ibuprofen can be pretty serious, but the most common side effects are actually a rash, ringing in the ears, headaches, dizziness, drowsiness, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, and heartburn. Um, now the more serious effects is that ulceration of the stomach and intestine can occur, and these ulcers may bleed. And sometimes, believe it or not, you may not even feel pain with these symptoms. If you're taking ibuprofen and if you're having a bowel movement and you notice that the, um, you know, the feces that comes out is a, is a black color or a dark color, you need to get that checked out right away because what that is is that's blood that's clotting within the digestive tract. And that's a usual indication that you have an ulcer we call it in the upper GI tract. So we're talking about in the stomach in the stomach or the small intestine usually is where that type of bleeding can be occurring from. But that can be one of the more serious effects of ibuprofen. And by the way, one thing I, I should have said, which I didn't before when we were talking about dosages, one of the major rules with ibuprofen that you may not be aware of is that you never want to take ibuprofen for more than 10 days at a time if you're using it for pain. Um, and with children, if you, a lot of people will use this for fevers to try to reduce fevers. If it does not reduce the fever in three days, you want to stop having the child take the ibuprofen at that point and see the doctor right away because this is the reason why. If you take it for long term, you're going to start to develop a lot of these physical problems and we don't want that to happen to you. So just make sure that you're really careful about this. There's also a reduction of blood flow to the kidneys and impaired function of the kidneys. Now, this is more of a side effect that we see a lot of times with the elderly if they're taking this on a long-term basis due to arthritis. But be aware that, you know, just because you see something that you can get over the counter doesn't mean that it's necessarily safe or not going to cause you long-term problems. Um, you, you don't want something that's going to be affecting your kidneys in a negative way, and ibuprofen is one of the things that can do that if you take it too much or too often. Allergic reactions are also known with ibuprofen. This is especially common in people who have asthma or other respiratory types of diseases. There's also an increased risk for heart disease and stroke uh, when a person takes ibuprofen, especially over the long term. 
Now there are some alternatives that you may want to look into. Um, and the most important thing, and I'm going to tell you, it's really simple when it comes down to pain especially. When you're dealing with pain, I personally have not found anything that is better than ice or heat. Now it is really, really important that you use the proper one because if you get this wrong, using ice or heat in the wrong situation can actually make your pain worse. So what I've actually developed is the little test that you can do called the ice versus heat test. Now let me explain this. In the case of inflammation, most of the time ice is going to be best. So if you're in pain, ice is usually good. However, there's a few conditions that ice will make worse. For example, arthritis is one of those conditions. If your condition is primarily due to a muscle injury, usually ice will not help that. It'll make it spasm more. So what you want to do is a little test to see which one is going to help you more. And here's how you do that. First of all, you want to put, you want to use real ice at the beginning. Okay, so get ice directly from your freezer. Do not use frozen vegetables. Don't use an ice pack or any of those substitutes. You want to get real ice. You can go ahead and put a towel over the area that you're going to be treating, which is the area of the pain, and then put the ice directly on top of that. Leave that on for 15 minutes or once the skin starts to feel numb, whichever comes first, wait an hour and then use the ice again. And you want to repeat that process as as often as you're awake. So if you're going to be up 10 hours and if you're in a lot of pain, use the ice every single hour for those 10 hours following that rule, okay? That will usually provide a lot of relief. If you use the ice two or three times and you're not noticing any improvement whatsoever or if you're noticing that it's feeling worse, now what you want to do is you want to discontinue the ice and then use um, heat. Now, in most cases, dry heat is going to be the best option. So if you just want to use an electric heating pad that you can buy at any drugstore, that would be the ideal situation. But you're going to follow the same rules, 15 minutes on, one hour off, and see how you feel doing that a couple times. Usually, you're going to know right away which one is going to benefit you the most. And I'm telling you that if you stick with those rules, and if you do it the way that I just outlined, that's going to give you the most benefit even above these medications typically. All right, so that's the first thing I want to tell you about. The next thing is something called proteolytic enzymes. Now, a lot of people think about enzymes when we think of digestion. So, for example, the stomach has enzymes and that's going to help break down food. However, proteolytic enzymes are systemic enzymes. And what that means is that when you take these on an empty stomach, the body is going to absorb them. They'll go into the bloodstream. And what they're going to do is they're going to break down all of these nasty chemicals that are being produced by the inflammatory process and help get rid of those things so that way the body can heal more quickly and it'll reduce the inflammation a lot more quickly. Now there's one brand that I like in particular, it's called Heal and Soothe, and on the page that I'm going to give you at the end, I'll have a link to um, some articles about this so that you can go and read about it and you can see where you can order it and that sort of thing. I've not seen this in stores though, so if you're interested in that, then you have to order it online. But like I said, I'll give you a link and you can investigate it yourself and see if it's something that you would be interested in. Next thing I would do is I would take probiotics. You can get these at pretty much any health food store. But what you want to do is if you're an inflamed in an inflamed situation where you're in pain or you've got a chronic condition of pain, you want to take four times the recommended amount on the bottle per day. And what probiotics will do is they'll basically help with um, breaking down those chemicals as well. The next thing you want to do is take vitamin D3, and you want to take 20,000 international units per day. Now, I know that sounds like a ton, but when you get the, the little bottle, and by the way, you can buy this at any health food store, you'll see that it's really just four little tiny pills. It's really not a lot, but vitamin D3 has been also shown to help reduce the inflammatory process. If you combine those three, if, if, if you do the ice heat, and then if you combine combine those three nutritional supplements, that usually has a really big effect on reducing inflammation quickly. Most of my patients, when they do this, they experience relief within one or two days. So it, it, it's, it's really a lot healthier for you. There aren't the same side effects that you would have with ibuprofen, and it happens pretty quickly in that case. Now, if you're dealing with chronic inflammatory conditions, which would be things like chronic back pain, arthritis, um, heart disease, lung diseases, all those things that I mentioned earlier, now you have to look at your diet because your diet is going to be the other thing that can produce an inflammatory process within the body. And if that happens over a period of time, your body isn't going to be able to heal and you're going to be stuck with that chronic condition. So here's what you want to look at in your diet. First of all, you want to eliminate all of the sugars from your diet. And I know that sounds horrible, <laughs> um, but 
honestly, this, if you do nothing else, that's the one thing that you should do when you're dealing with your diet and inflammation because sugar is one of the primary stimulators of the inflammatory process in the body. If you eliminate that, it'll make a huge difference. You also want to eliminate white flour from your diet. And, you know, these would be things like white breads, pasta, and that sort of thing. And a good rule to follow is this. If you're reading a label on a food item at the grocery store, if it has more than six grams of carbs, I wouldn't eat it at this point because more than that is going to start to produce that inflammatory process. And then the final big thing that you can do is to increase your fruits and vegetables. Obviously, we want to recommend that you go organic if you can. Um, but really just increasing your fruits and vegetables in general will make a huge difference. All of the fiber, the nutrients, the water that you're going to be getting from taking the fruits and vegetables in, it'll help eliminate a lot of the toxins that are being built up from that inflammatory process, and it will help you become healthier a lot more quickly, and it'll help you get out of pain a lot more quickly. Now, I have I have this product that I love. It's called the Nutribullet, and basically it's just like a blender, but it, what it does is it takes the nutrients from the food and as it's blending it brings out those nutrients so that your body can more easily absorb them and what I do is I make a drink every day I just do this once a day and what I do is I put spinach in it apple pear pineapple and banana and what this drink does is it's designed to cleanse your body and if you look at that because you're putting all of that in there you're getting your five servings of fruits and vegetables a day in that one drink so it really makes this process a lot easier and it tastes pretty good now, if you're in pain or if you're experiencing a health condition that you believe is due to chronic inflammation, the other thing that you want to add to this drink would be an inch of fresh ginger root. Um, obviously, you want to peel off the outside of it because it, it, it has a husk on the outside of it or whatever you want. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> but you have to peel that off, and it comes off pretty easily. You just take a spoon and grind it against it, and it'll pull it right off. But then you just mix that ginger root in there, and uh, that helps a lot with the inflammatory process as well. Okay, so those are the, the other alternatives that you can do. Look at your diet, look at those nutritional supplements, use the ice or the heat, but make sure you do that test to see which one is going to help you more first. And, um, and those are alternatives if you're not interested in having the side effects of the ibuprofen. Now, if you'd like more information, this is the pr page that I created. You'll see this video on that page, and also I have everything written out there for you. It's healyourbulgingdisc.com slash ibuprofen.html. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can just go down below this video to the description, and I have the link there. So you can just click on it, and it'll take you right to that page. But I'll have a list of the resources that I mentioned, including those nutritional supplements and that sort of thing. Um, also, if the, you're a little confused about the ice and heat, situation that I discussed in this video. If you look to the left of this video on that page, I have a free ebook that I offer. Now this doesn't apply to everybody because obviously the ebook that I wrote was about spinal disc conditions, but if you are looking at using the ice and heat and if you just go ahead and download that free ebook, the very first thing I talk about in there is the ice and heat in more detail. So if you need more information about that, go ahead and download that free ebook. And like I said, you'll see it to the left of this video on that page on my website and um, you can get all the details about the ice and heat from looking at that. All right, thank you so much. I hope you found this information helpful and have a great day.